What's good, everybody? It's your boy Showtime. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Y'all already know what time it is. So, news just came out. Stephen and White has parted ways officially with the Connecticut Sun. Now, we heard about this a couple weeks ago, them potentially parting ways. Well, a couple vac vacancies in the WNBA. You got a lot of coaches. You got a lot of coaches that got fired, like three GMs that got fired, you know, including Vegas. You know, um, they're going to make some changes over there in Vic. And we'll talk about that in another video. But Stephanie White has been let go. Now, Kaylin Clark fans, I've been hearing all year long about Chris's size not being a good head coach. The, the organization got bullied into firing Chris's size. There's no other there's no other way I can um, justify why she should have got fired. Because, first of all, she only been with this team for two years. And every single year it got better. You gotta look at it like this. This franchise have made the playoffs since 2016. Now that she finally got more pieces uh, on her team, and she finally got uh, um a balanced roster other than um your two favorite players just don't play defense in the backcourt. I thought she did pretty well getting the best out of her team, her, her out of her players, other than um the Lisa Smith. The Lisa Smith just don't fit. This equation with Kaylin Clark. Um, and whatever the, the system, Chrissy size wanted to wanted to run. She wanted to play faster. At least the smells not necessarily the piece that fits that system. Now, could this mean at least the smell staying now that Chrissy side gone? Maybe, maybe not. But I do find it interesting that she got let go um with no valid reason behind her getting let go. What are you going to say? She's not a. She didn't do a good job. How she didn't go, do a good job when literally she, they started the season off. They they got to uh, the worst start in the league, and she made the adjustments. She did the best she could to get Kaitlyn Clark going because Kaitlyn Clark was very gun shot early in this season, and she kept saying in interviews, "I want Kaitlyn Clark to be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive." Then she started being aggressive. You saw more in the second half. You saw the Indiana Fever was starting to play better. And um, another thing, too, you know, a lot of people, they're going to say, you know, they're going to give Kayla Clark all of the credit. But is Kayla Clark also going to take the blame for this team being one of the worst defensive teams in the league, especially in the backcourt? They, like, they have – they play no – Kayla Clark plays no defense. Christy Sides did a good job of trying to hide her on defense, playing the zone. And, you know, that, that's not to say everything was perfect. Everything wasn't perfect with Christy Sides. I'm not saying that. I think the media did a very good job of separating Christy Sides and Caitlin Clark and putting everything on Christy Sides. You was the scapegoat. Uh, they were teasing Leah Boston early in the season, uh, calling her everything but the child of God. And um, they don't respect Kelsey Mitchell for whatever reason, because they want to they want to use everything around Kevin Clark as a scapegoat and put her on this pedestal, you know. But you have to be careful, because when things when when all the things around you start to get addressed, and your team still not winning championships, then at what point is going to become your problem, or her problem, right? When she going to start being a problem when she's not playing defense? The Indiana Fever will never win a championship until everybody's committed to playing defense. That's just a, that's just a thing, you know. And I'm not talking about getting a steal in the block here and there. I'm talking about really covering your person. Like you, it's, if you get switched, if you get if if an offensive player get a switch and um, he feel like she feel like you are a bad defender and she's trying to go at you, you got to be able to hold your own. You got to be able to cut off the penetration. You gotta be able to um, contest shots. You gotta be able to rotate on defense, help cover your teammates while they help covering you. So it's a lot of things to defense. I got we got to see more with Caitlin Clark now. Caitlin Clark, a lot of Caitlin Clark um, fans are not really committed to real basketball. They only want to see logo three pointers and assists. But it's a reason why she haven't won a championship. She came close. They could have won, right? But if you if your best player is not committed to playing defense, you're not going to win. I mean, it's just simple as that. We all we, we you like the local threes. They're pretty. They go in or whatever. 
you know, the, the, the um, she stopped doing the, you, you um, can't see me. She, she stopped doing that after 2023 championship. That, that, they got um, wasted, right? They got wasted to the side. Um, I mean, what's new? I mean, we're going to sell our tickets. We're going to, um, we're going to hang our tongue out our mouth when we hit three pointers. But, um, what if you lose? All right, you get Stephanie White in, right? What if they still lose? Then what? What's next? Y'all going to say Trey Lee of Boston, Trey Kelsey Mitchell. I mean, what's next? At the end of the day, you got to, as a fan, if you really want Kayla Clark to win the championship, you need to hold her accountable defensively. And, um, that's as simple as that. This new era of fans, they always look at the what the what the um coach like if you like like this the fan boys, I would say fan boys, the LeBron fan boys, you know, the you know I don't know, um Kevin Durant, you know, the the Steph Curry's, the Kawhi Leonard's, the Giannis and the Kupos, the you know, if you're a fan of one player, you it's a lot of a lot of guys don't never analyze the game as a whole. They're just looking at, okay, what are my favorite players? Need? You know, and sometimes you can be, some sometimes you can come out very disingenuous because when you, when it's time to talk real basketball with real hoop fans, you know, you're gonna you're gonna sound <laughs> you're gonna sound like a lost duck in the equation. So my message is this: if if this move is all about getting Stephanie White. This would be big. For whoever gets Stephanie White. Chicago, I'm going to say this about Chicago. Chicago seems like they have, they're a, they have this stain on them. They have a bad stain on them, a bad reputation. And, um, and it's kind of unfortunate because when you got two young talents coming in from winning programs, where well, I would say South Carolina's winning program. LSU's winning program because of Reese went over there the first year. They got a championship, right? You got two players that used to winning, and yet you're losing. You know, you were, you've been a losing organization. Yeah, they made the playoffs last year because they had the vets, but they no longer have the vets anymore. It's a completely different turnaround now. You got a new GM. You just fired Teresa Witherspoon after one year. So what are you going to do? Are you as committed as the Indiana Fever? Seem like to me, Chicago need to be listening to the fans just like Indiana Fever need to listen to the fans. Indiana Fever, um, they're listening to their fans, and um, they're they're thinking about okay, we gonna have to make moves because we might lose tickets because you got a lot of fans are bullying, <laughs> a lot of people are bullying them, man. They're getting bullied into um, making changes. Seems like it to me. And Chicago, I feel like this: Chicago can't get it right for Angel Reese. I think Reese should, should go. Why, why waste your talent in Chicago if they're not going to put a, um, a a championship roster around you? Why? Uh, I don't. Could I don't. I know. I know. Reese likes Chicago. Maybe she don't right now because they got rid of her coach. But if I'm Angel Reese, I'm looking around. I'm like, bro, uh, Atlanta looks pretty good. I like playing. I like playing with Lisa, Lisa Gray at the All Star game. We might team up in the rival league. Um, I like New York. I don't know how long JJ gonna be there. I don't know how I don't know how long Stewie gonna be there. I like um uh, the Bay of Cairo. That's in California. So pick your poison. And I'm serious about this. Like this organization have done nothing but mistreat their stars. They have done nothing but mistreat their stars. They haven't done right by their stars. So I don't recommend Andrew staying there if they're not gonna do right by them. Yeah, they built a new facility with the studio because y'all know Andrew's got an unapologetic podcast, right? So they try to they trying to like make it seem like we're gonna do right by her. We're gonna put a roster behind her. Okay, cool. We hit a we as as somebody that's supporting both, I need to see y'all make real changes. If not, i we got I wanna see her go somewhere else. Simple as that. Because she don't have the same setup up Caden Clark has. She don't have uh, um rookie of the year on her team. She don't have another all-star on her team. So she don't have that same setup. Yeah, Camilla Cadoso, third third pick in the draft. She's trying to come into her own. And then Kennedy Carter just not coming back in the league. She's these these are not all stars already. Kennedy Clark, when she came to when she got drafted to any um Leah Boston was an all-star already. Kelsey Mitchell was an all-star already. And they had a, a nice 
balanced roster around her with shooting, size. The only thing they need, the only thing Indiana need, um, is they is they backcourt to play defense. That's it. But um, let me know what y'all think, man. Be in the comment section. Light it up, man. How do y'all feel about the Indiana field possibly getting Stephen White?